In a year where everything was turned upside down for college students and higher ed institutions, there is a new focus on the cost of a college education. We talked with Stockton University President Dr. Harvey Kesselman about how COVID-19 has changed the conversation. Dr. Kesselman, this has been really an unprecedented year for higher education institutions. Uh, what is kind of front and center on your mind as we look ahead to next year and you reflect back on 2020? Great question. And one that, uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time reflecting upon recently as we, you know, begin to close down the fall semester after, the, you know, the spring semester that we had. First, I, I really want to commend the faculty, the staffs of our university, um, our students um, who've had to really adjust everything from the expectations of what they, they thought they were going to um, you know, going to do prior to March of 20, you know, of 2020, vis-a-vis uh, -vis what, what happened in their lives since that point. We'll take the best of what we learned from this and incorporate it to supplement, you know, what we do, what we do very best. And I think it gives us a lot more flexibility, for example. We have a large proportion, you know, a substantial proportion of our population is the traditional student, the 18 to 22, 23 year old. Now we can reach audiences that we hadn't reached before only because we've learned, when I say we, our faculty have learned different technological skills that they didn't have and now they've become more deft at dealing with it. So, but, but this was transformative and you have to worry about our students, you know, our, our students, their families, um, because a lot of people have gone through very difficult financial times and we have to be mindful of institutions of higher education to try to deliver what we're doing and we're doing multiple things. How has the conversation around affordability and tuition and college costs changed mm -hmm. now? Well, I think it's it's a constant conversation. This is not a new conversation. What, you know, we, one of the, one of the, I think the greatest things about our New Jersey legislature and our governors, and this is bipartisan, um, their support of the TAG program, which is a tuition aid grant program, their support of the EOF program, their support of student financial aid programs, along with the federal support, because the federal government did come through with some funds for our students. So it's it's important to understand that, um, and we have, and we're mindful of that, and many of us tuition discount on top of that, and by that I mean that we provide, particularly for needy students, we provide additional institutional support out of our own funds to ensure that students who are, you know, in, in, in difficult situations, we A, have vehicles for them to tap into to help get through the semesters. We provided refunds and credits and things of that nature when they have to move off campus. So between all of the different, you know, indicators that we look at, we're obvious, you know, we're going to always look at our costs, how we can reduce costs, how we can also reduce the student's cost. And that is by, like I said, you have what, what your price of the institution is, but based on your income is what's going, what you're going to pay. And we, along with many of the other ones, move from merit-based to much more need-based aid uh, during these time periods, rather than, you know, just rewarding um, SATs or those kinds of things, looking to the need-based aid as the way to help our student population. Dr. Kesselman, there's been a lot of talk about what might happen under a Biden administration in terms of student loan debt. And that talk includes some potential forgiveness. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on, first of all, does that make sense to you? And second of all, the student debt problem, is it time to rethink it entirely? Uh, you know, this is interesting. And I hope we do uh, as a country have a, a robust, you know, thoughtful discussion because it, it's not as simplistic as it may seem to be. I've always believed in loan redemption, you know, loan reduction programs for certain academic fields. For example, we need social workers. We need um, what healthcare workers. We need nurses. We need certain fields that that as a, as a society we say are important. And and as you can see through the pandemic, how important they really are. I've always believed that if people commit to those kinds of things, whether it was, you know, teaching in urban environments, that there should be some kind of loan reduction as they go on uh, to, to basically say, look, if you give us three, four years in, in, in you know, it, in an environment where we need those skills, then, and then we will reduce your student loan by a certain amount. I've always believed in those. Uh, and I think they can be, you know, pretty effective. Um, on the other hand, you know, 
as a society, when we look at the student loan problem, and 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 a lot of times I I I worry more about the students that began college or university, borrowed money and didn't finish. It's complex. I think it needs to be strategic. I have a feeling that the new administration will do it that way. Uh, it certainly is not inconsistent with what New Jersey has been trying to do the last couple, you know, the last few years under Governor Murphy, who was linked to all of that. We need to think out of the box come up with an equitable system that also, it's very important, if we believe STEM careers are critical to the future economy of the state, and we do, or the nation, and we do, then we need to figure out how do we make sure that more people are accept have accessibility to those kinds of careers, and then how do we help them pay for those kinds of careers that will benefit our society, uh, you know, in a maximum way down the road. So you both have to look short-term and long-term at this, at this question. And we really haven't done that, Rhonda. We really haven't. Let's see if we do in uh, 2021. Dr. Kessman, thank you so much for your insights. Well, thank you. And thank you for your time this morning. Thanks for watching. For more clips and episodes of NJ Business Beat, subscribe to the NJ Spotlight News YouTube channel.